What's up everybody? Captain Matt here and today we're going to talk about prop sticks and auto dippers. This is going to be the last part of the crabbing arsenal series related to trot lines. Are they the same? Are they different? Is this unfair? Stay tuned. Let's find out. So prop sticks, the prop stick is the device or attachment that connects to your boat into the water. So when you drive up to your first buoy, you stick a hook out, grab the line after the buoy towards the main line, drag it up and put it here. And then you run your boat towards the other buoy. That's the whole purpose. These are very, most of them are, most people do it yourself. Like one of the most common ways to build a prop stick is just using standard PVC. This is optional. Um, this piece here is uh, something that Captain Bruce sells. It's really nice. It's designed to just slide into your fishing rod holder if you have one on your boat, and it uses standard threads where the uh, threaded PVC connection can go on. It just makes it easier to get it in and out uh, onto your boat. Uh, I don't always like drilling holes and having little brackets, so I really like this method, but several people I see just attach a bracket of some sort right against the gunnel. Um, to hold their PVC in place. And I'll show hopefully a couple other pictures of more than just this design, but it's very basic. So when you're designing one of these, um, it's helpful to know where the water line comes on your boat. So we want to figure out first where you want to get this mounted. So make sure you leave room. You're going to be standing in front of where this is mounted, somewhere out here in the boat. As the line comes up, you're going to leave enough room as you stand here to take a net and scoop the crabs off as they come up. So first thing is to figure out where distance wise and towards front or back where you want this mounted on your boat. You want this section, there's no right or wrong again, you know, I'd say a couple feet. So if you're gonna take a net and you're gonna scoop, um, you wanna at least leave a, at least, I'd say at least a foot and a half to two feet from the outside of your boat to where this line's gonna run. You remember when you're driving the boat, you're not, it's not always gonna be a perfect two feet away, like the boat's gonna drift, the water's gonna, the wind's gonna push you one way, the tide might push you another way, you might have someone that can't steer the boat. So as you go side to side, the line's gonna kinda wanna drift towards the boat and away from the boat, and that's where these help keep, this is the minimum distance and this is the maximum distance. So I'd say at least you're gonna want from here to here, from the outside of your boat, at least a foot, foot and a half, maybe two foot in general, you know. Um, I see a lot of designs where this is a lot closer, so it doesn't wobble back and forth. Then you're going to want it about six inches to a foot off the water. So this distance here is going to be determined by your water line, and you're just going to want it slightly out of the water. You don't want this thing dragging through the water, um, but you won't, don't want it sitting too high, because the higher you have it, the distance where the line comes out of the water is going to go forward, because it's going to go up and it's creasing your angle. So I'd say about a foot, six inches to a foot off the water. Remember, you're going to have waves. It's not always perfectly flat. And it's going to rock. So just make sure this isn't dragging in the water. So about a foot on average is going to be good. You'll see lots of designs. This is used to help the snood and mostly the clam bag come over in a smooth like manner and to kind of help with flinging mud. So there's two problems. You want to keep, as I mentioned earlier in the crab line, you want to keep all the vibrations and bumping and pulling of the line to a minimum as possible to not spook the crabs. Um, this, the second byproduct of this is if you're using clam bags specifically, as they flip over, they have a tendency to sling mud. Most of the places you're gonna crab in Maryland are, are pretty muddy. But you'll see pictures after a, a hard day's crab and the whole side of the boat is covered out. So this is a way to try to minimize vibrations and also eliminate some of the sling. Um, what you'll see, and I'll show you next down there, um, is a flap, and that ha really helps stop the flinging of the mud. One other design I used to have and I've seen is like, instead of this, you'll have like a roller. Um, I had found some spools, some plastic spools that were used to, I think it was like Cat 4, Cat 6 wire, electrical wire, something. Um, and it was a plastic center to that spool. And then I inserted the spool in between the PVC and it actually so it, the whole spool would roll. Again, it was just trying to help any, uh, minimize any vibrations, bouncing 
um, and slinging. Also seen some like nylon, almost look like trailer rollers that uh, people use. I think Captain Bruce sells them like that. Um, so there's all sorts of options, all sorts of different ways to design it. If I can find the picture, uh, my buddy Captain Claus, he bought one and it was made out of pipe, like threaded pipe. I guess it was gas pipe and you could use full solid metal piping. Um, one of the downsides to this, it's cheap, um, but as the line rides it, it slowly over time wears grooves into wherever it mostly rides against. Um, I'd say if you get out any decent amount, say 10, 15 times a year, a minimum, um, you're more than likely gonna wanna replace this every year. Now this one, outside of this piece, it's probably 30, 40 bucks max, maybe uh, uh, of materials. So they're cheap, it's not a, not a bad practice. Um, it's always also good to possibly carry a second one. Um, and I had that experience a couple times, I typically don't carry a second prop stick, but on occasion I wish I did. I just, you never know, you get a little snag, you know, you get wrapped around a branch, something happens, you get the uh, main line caught in your prop. Um, I think the couple times I had it, it just, it was a weakness somewhere in here and it cracked and it fell off. The story that comes into mind was, uh, it's the first year I had my tide water, and that's not a boat I really wanted to crab out of, but I always wanted to take nice long journeys up and down the bay. So I left the sassafras, motored all the way down to the Y. <clears throat> Fun ride, got down there, got set up, started running the line, and the prop stick broke, like second run. And there were some crabs, it was, it was unfortunate. I wish I had a second one on that, but all that time and money that I spent wasting on bait, gas, and it was our first journey trying to crab in that boat and uh, didn't go so well. So if possible, this is rather large, um, just have a backup plan. I've seen, you know, in crises, maybe it's more towards the end of the day, you could use like just a pole from your dipping net and kind of have that sticking outside the boat if you could wedge it up there somehow. There's all sorts of ways you could, in a pinch, try to keep going if the crabbing's good or you still want to go. Um, otherwise, you're going to want to have a backup plan. So with my current boat, um, the Grady, I ran all last year just with the Auto Dipper here. There's a couple of reasons for that. I knew I was gonna end up being by myself. The, with, with the size of the boat and the way it's laid out without a secondary controls of steering and throttle, there was no way I was gonna be able to dip and drive by myself. Um, so that's why, I, that was the primary reason why I got the Auto Dipper. On the times that I did have help, uh, whether my son was there, he does not like to dip, but he doesn't like to drive either. But some of my other friends like to drive, like to dip. It, it you know, dipping is fun. I think this will work, it has enough adjustments. Um, I just sit so high off the water in, in the Grady. Something like this with PVC, and if I had to have like another foot or two, I'm just afraid it would be too flexible and more likely to break. So the last piece of equipment we're gonna talk about is the Auto Dipper. Similar to the prop stick, it is basically a prop stick, but it just has a net or a cage underneath of it so the crabs can fall in. Basically the line runs up as the snoods fall and hit this, the crabs will get spooked and they drop. You're moving forward, the forward momentum, they all swim into the net. Um, they can be built in different materials. This is heavy duty, um, steel, aluminum. I've seen them made out of PVC. It does create a lot of drag and there's a lot of pressure. You know, I'd be a little leery with PVC, but they ha they do work. I've seen them. You know, if you'd ever catch a snag, I'd be a little worried that it might break or something like that. But uh, for smaller boats, you can make a more lightweight version. Um, it's nothing fancy. It just needs a, similar to the prop stick. It needs a, this needs to be at the right height off the water. This needs to be a little bit of ways out of your boat. This cage, I think, is 30 by 30. You know, there's no right or wrong. Obviously, the bigger it is, um, the more opportunity you have to still catch crabs. But if it's bigger, then it also is more weight and it's more drag. It, it does create a lot of drag on your boat. Um, one of the hardest things to get used to was the amount of drag on this boat made my boat steer quite differently. Um, normally, you look straight ahead and forward part of your boat that's your boat and that's where it drives. With this thing deployed and in the water, angles like this and goes in a straight motion like this. It's a little, it goes straight crooked. Um, there are ways to counteract the drag by putting more drag on the other side. Some people put like a bucket. I'm um, gonna drag a bucket on the other side to create counter drag. I don't do that, I just I compensate via steering. Um, it's not the end of the world. Um, this does make it a little more trickier too when you come up to your first buoy to attach your line 
obviously this is all in the way, but something like this, you can actually let the billy float underneath and then just hook the line and, and you're off way you're running. Um, with this, you can, you know, this, it create a bad situation. It's happened to me a couple times where the billy gets stuck and starts pulling on this and pulling on the line and it creates a mess. So it's a little more trickier, hence that's why I use the uh, telescopic hook um, to, to get my line back onto the uh, top here. So there are pros and cons to running a dipper. Um, it's not magic. It doesn't make me cr catch more crabs. Um, in some instances, I think it does help catching crabs and some it doesn't. Um, it's not magic. Um, first and foremost, with this, um, I can run by myself. Another aspect that I was hoping that this would give me is in the early and late season, you typically see a lot of drop-offs of your crabs. I was hoping to catch more that I would typically miss where I just couldn't get enough reaction time. With my only one year of experience with this, it's, it's somewhat true. You do see a lot of crabs, they'll drop off, they'll dart left, dart right, and they still end up in this cage. You know, I do miss some that I think that I could catch manually with a net. It's not a magic sauce where I'm just scooping up and vacuuming up all the crabs off the bottom of the river. So one of the huge drawbacks, besides cost, right, this is cheap, easy, you can build it yourself, not much weight, don't need a lot of special rigging. This is expensive, heavy, but what most people talk about, the main drawback of this is when you catch a crab and the crab falls in, you're basically dragging it through the water, forcing it, I don't know if you even call it maybe drowning the crab, but the issue is the mortality rate. Obviously, if I'm selling to a business or retailer, wholesaler, I want quality crabs. I don't want, don't want the crabs to die. As soon as I get them, I don't want them to die before they get there. You know, most places hold on to live crabs for ho hopefully at least a day, two days, three days, even longer, um, depending on how healthy they are. Mortality is a huge concern and, and dragging the crabs through the water doesn't help. So I have some general guidelines that I follow while using this. Um, while on days I can run any, I'll run anywhere from 2,400 feet to 4,800 feet worth of line. In the hot days in midsummer, early fall, where the water temperature is 80 plus degrees, 85 degrees, I will not run more than 1,200 feet continuous using this dipper. I'd like to get the crabs out. I don't want to drag the crab a mile down the river sitting in here. Early season, late season, cooler waters, I'll run 24, 36. You know, late season, I've even run the whole 4,800 feet one run using a dipper. Um, my buyers have never complained. I constantly ask, you know, how's the dead lost? Are they surviving? Any complaints? Um, and I, I've never had any complaints yet. Um, they've been quite happy. Unlike a, where you're manually dipping, you get the crab right out of the water. It's not getting drugged through the water. It goes right into a basket. Um, it's a lot less stressful for the crab going this method. I've seen many different types of designs outside of this. There are designs where it has a full metal cage instead of a net. Um, using this net, I, I, the net can be a huge pain in the ass. The crabs like to stick to it. Um, once you haul this out, obviously there's a, uh, it connects to a pole with a wench and you wench it up, pull it in. Then I have to empty that net into the basket. The, this net is designed with a drawstring in the back with a loop and uh, an opening. So you undo the drawstring, open it up and the crabs should dump out in theory, it never worked that well. I got so frustrated with that that I just left it knotted up and tied up and never used it. I'd bring the crab, the dipper into the boat and just force the crabs out through the front and then just shake them out. Um, the crabs love to hang on to this, this rope. Um, it's sometimes really painful trying to get them out of here. I definitely think the mesh system would work a lot better, the cage basket. Um, I'm not sure actually how that works. Maybe it's a different angle when it comes into the boat, but I definitely can see that being a positive. On the, the plus side for this though, it, the depth is, is shallower with a full metal cage. If it's another foot or two, that, that's a lot of room, uh, especially my boat. I don't have a true work boat. So overall, I'm really happy with this setup. No real major issues. Uh, there's definitely a learning curve to it. You take some precautionary measures just to keep, make sure your mortality rates stay as good as they can be. It's a little bit more challenging. I do miss the days of just running a prop stick. Um, but like I said, I just like, to, you know, I need to be able to go out by myself when I need to. And with that said, I think one of the funnest aspects of this is just the dipping. I've had some guys out that only dip um, and they've come out and they were almost bored. 
this is not for everybody. All right, that's gonna be a wrap for today's video. Like all things crabbing, it's more about preference, you know, your style, your budget, your boat. Um, there is no right or wrong. One of the things I just wanted to dispel was that these things are unfair, they're an unfair advantage, you know, you, so while you think that you're just gonna magically suck up all these crabs running this down the line, you're never gonna miss one, totally not true. With this, you just have no mobility whatsoever. If the crab happens to bounce in, dart in, that's great. With this, I can take a net and, and lean over and get crabs that otherwise I wouldn't get with this. So the biggest pro with this is I can operate by myself. There's no way for me to manually dip crabs with a net and, and drive this rig at the same time. So in some instances, can I catch more crabs with this? Yeah, but it really depends on the circumstances. So the pros with this, it's lightweight, it's small, it's very do-it-yourself, it's cheap, proven, and dipping's fun. And until next time, I'll catch you later.